Redfish Lake. So 2008, little backstory, face-to-face -to -face tour. <clears throat> a lot of people were, were stoked on the face-to-face -to -face tour. We did it for two years. Um, it was our way of bringing water skiing, but also some other things like, you know, actually some fitness-based stuff and some how's your body moving off the water type stuff. Yeah. So we brought that to kind of the general water ski public and we were trying to bring water skiing to the people. And so on the face-to-face -to -face tour in 2008 with our buddy PJ McMillan, we came here to Redfish Lake in Idaho, right over there. Launched the boat with the, with the motorhome and Jenny skied, I skied. And this water is some of the clearest water. You see the sawtooths back there. It was um, insane. I literally thought when I was driving the boat for Marcus that I was gonna hit every rock in the bottom of the lake because it's so clear, yeah. it was terrifying. Looks like you're gonna hit the bottom, but it's really like 50 feet deep. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was a fun time. And super memorable, like 2008, we were here for like just a couple hours and we always have talked about it. And now- We're back. We're back. And- For the first time since. We skied last night. Uh, with our buddy Carl Rickson was here doing some filming down in Sun Valley and then we uh, we came up here and decided to relive the uh, the 12 years ago scenario from the face-to-face -to -face tour so really what we wanted to talk about briefly was just finding balance not being afraid to get outside your comfort zone obviously not everybody can can pop away for a weekend to to redfish but I'm sure there's there's places close by that aren't your normal private ski lake or your 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 course your private club course um, but yet it gives you the ability and the permission to find a new sensation last night skiing in almost darkness making turns uh, underneath that scene yeah. was was well, really cool moonlight over the sawtooths moonlight over the sawtooths and it and just, it was spawn sorry to interrupt you yeah. but it was spontaneous like that was one thing that was you know don't always plan everything. That's what I'm trying to learn from this guy. But it was just, we kind of finished a work day down in Sun Valley, drove up here, and all of a sudden we're using a boat from a friend of Carl Rickson's and skiing at dark. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was spontaneous and fun, and there's going to be another memory that we hold forever. And you got to make those happen. Yeah. I think, I think for, for me uh, and for Jenny as well, what we realize is, when you, when you get in the groove, whether it's, uh, you know, you do the same workouts or you, you, you do the same kind of ski sets, you lose your sensitivity, you lose your sensation, you lose the ability to feel what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you, when you lose that sensitivity, you, you, you lose or your ability to respond, your ability to use your own understanding to actually try new things, like we talked about last week with Will Asher. Uh, the, that kind of goes out the window because you get desensitized. And so one thing about changing your environment every so often, in other words, maybe going to a public lake or just getting outside the course where you can actually feel things that you don't normally feel because now there's not buoys coming at you or you have to feel because it's dark and you're skiing by braille, whatever the reason, <laughs> the more you can feel, I think the better skier you're going to be. Um, and you, maybe you can feel some things. Maybe you're like, oh man, I'm trying to get stacked or I'm trying to get in my stance or I'm trying to feel front foot pressure, but I'm all over the back of the ski. Suddenly you're able to feel the stuff that maybe you've heard us talk about um, on the Flow Point Method or if you're a Flow Point Method member, uh, some of the more in-depth stuff that we have on the course, you can feel that. Yeah. When you're doing something outside your comfort zone, like free skiing. And you're not thinking about a buoy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, maybe you're not thinking about all of the tips and tricks and stuff that we give you, and you're just like out there being and doing it, and it's awesome, and you have a really good time um, doing it without thinking about it. Yeah. You're just being and enjoying the hell out of skiing on top of the water in this big, huge, awesome scene. Yeah, so that's, that's a thought for the day right there. <laughs> Redfish Lake coming at you from middle of nowhere, oh, Idaho. But wait, like what we what? were talking about in the very beginning is 2008, we were here, went on this water ski tour called the Face to Face Tour, and we found ourselves at Redfish Lake in the middle of our tour and always had a memory of coming back here and doing it. And we're here, and ironically, it's right as we are like in the heart of launching and doing and bringing the Flow Point Method to all of you. 
and it's just an evolution from where we were 12 years ago. You know, yeah. I saw then that, wow, like coming from my background, water skiing is this incredible sport that no one prepares their body for. <laughs> they don't warm up before they ski. They, you know, some people do. Some people do. I shouldn't say that. But, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. And like a, an understanding of how to actually train for it in the off season. And then, um, like we're talking about doing fun things and not just course, 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 course skiing. Um, we're now in the flow point method where we have brought the last 12 years of experience and beyond to you guys in a holistic program and we're pumped and being here is just a good reflection on the growth that we've had in 12 mm -hmm. years and honored to be able to bring it to you guys. Yeah, we're stoked to kind of build off of the, basically what she's saying is <laughs> the flow point method is face face tour 2.0. So if all you guys are, we're asking about, um, you know, when are we gonna bring the face to face tour back? Well, we kind of did without you knowing it. It's called the flow point method and we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, and we were literally just talking on our walk this morning about how starting, depending on COVID situations, we're going to get more of that in-person stuff going as well starting next spring at the Ridge. So yep. that face-to-face, -face, my face in your place. <laughs> and sometimes your face in places like this. Yeah. Redfish Lake. Yep. All right. That's a deep thoughts for the week. Coffee. My knee hurts. Also, skiers should be able to squat for more than two minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, skiers and humans in general should be able to squat. I'm currently sitting, but Marcus mm. is semi-squatting in these awkward positions. Like, we don't always have a flat ground, right? Yeah. But yeah, full function of your joints and your body is critical for longevity, for performance, for pain freeness. AKA if you can get your body in shapes, mm -hmm. then you'll be healthier and you'll be able to ski better. That's yeah. what she's trying to say. Which is what the whole flow point method strength and conditioning portion is about. So and Pogo's currently eating some dog poop <laughs> Pogo, or squirrel poop. I hey, think a stick. What are you Let's eating? Stick. Come here, Pogo. Come say hi. Come get this. I think it might be poop. The lake's glassy. Unfortunately, we don't have a third. So I don't think we can go steal Carl's friend's boat yeah. and get out there because don't have a flagger. We don't have a flagger. Pogue? Pogo could be the third. She needs to step up her game. Yeah. 